Chapter 17 The Full Set The joint common room was quiet, just a few older students studying here and there. Lydia and Shona shuffled into the booth opposite each other. Lydia was unexpectedly upset to find that someone had been eating crisps in her booth. She took out her wand and vanished the crumbs. Shona spoke first. This is serious, isn't it? I assume I'm sworn to secrecy. Is it about, you know, why you're a bit different? Lydia chuckled to herself and shook her head. Bloody Ravenclaws, too smart for her own good. Yes, it is serious. Yes, it's sort of secret. Though there are a few others who are in on it. And yes, it is about how I'm different. Lydia told her the whole background story. She was becoming slicker and more succinct in its telling, so it was over before long. Lydia realised she was weary of having to tell it. It gave her a pang of pity to think how many times Ambrose must have told his own guilty story over the millennia. As the story arrived at the present day, Lydia explained about the need for the companions. So you want me to be one of your companions? Shona asked. She sounded surprised. Yes, Lydia agreed. That's exactly what I want. You don't have to decide immediately. And if you say no, I can wipe your memory so that you'll never have to worry about it. I, I well, yes, I'll do it. But, Shona stammered. Why me? I always thought you found me a bit silly. Lydia regarded her for a moment. What's wrong with being silly? Look at Freddy. He's as silly as sixpence. One of my uncle's sayings. But he's one of my best friends, and someone who is wonderful to have around. So are you, Shones. You're good, you're fun, and you're loyal. You've been beside me right from the start and through the worst. Lydia smiled at her. Shona gave her a weak smile in return. To be honest, Lydia continued, there was a time I didn't want to ask you. But that was because I wanted to protect you. You're too good to lose. But so is Freddy. And he reminded me you have a compassion we'll need on the team. I sort of want you to say no and stay safe. I want that for every one of the companions. But Freddy and Soph told me, it's not me putting them in danger. We're all in danger already. Everybody. The companions have a chance to save them. To save everyone and everything we love. Shona swallowed. I won't let you down, Lydia. Count me in. Of course you won't, Lydia said. You never have. So, Dean and Oddie? Shona asked. Yeah, they're companions, Lydia confirmed. Don't get me started. Oddie's known about this longer than I have. Shona grinned. Is that a surprise? Oddie pretty much knows everything. Lydia sighed. Yeah, well, we've still got time to go up to the tower before lunch. Lydia presented Shona with her companion's bracelet, and the two of them shuffled out of the booth. Shona hugged Lydia and whispered, Thank you. Not for the mortal danger thing, or even the bracelet. Thank you for trusting me, wanting me. Lydia hugged her in return. As arranged, Lydia grabbed a quick bite for lunch, then went up to the joint common room again. This time she was meeting with Freddy's cousin, Fenella. Freddy joined the two of them as they were wriggling onto the bench seats of the booth. His mouth was full and he was holding a couple of cauldron cakes. He stood and chewed his mouthful at them for a few seconds, swallowed, then said, Shuffle up, Lids. I've come to help you. As he slipped onto the end of the bench, Fenny, sitting opposite, took the cakes and tossed one to Lydia. Thanks for your help, Freddy, Fenny said. You can go now. Hey, he protested. Those cakes were for me. We didn't invite you, Fenny said. Actually, this concerns him, Lydia said. Though I agree, our need for cakes is greater than his. Fenny shrugged and looked intrigued. Lydia, 
and with occasional help from Freddy, explained the story so far, the current situation, and the coming need. Fenny asked a few questions, then thought for a while. I'll join you, Lydia, she said at last. I'm sorry. I can't let Freddy be at risk as well. Lydia and Freddy looked at each other. I don't think Freddy's optional, Lydia explained. He's been in this too long. Fenny sighed. Then I'm going to have to say no, and ask you to find someone else. I can't put the family in a position where they could lose two more members. Then, if we don't do this... Freddy began. Lydia put her hand on his arm. No, it's all right, Fredster. I understand what she's saying. Fenny, I won't press you if you're not happy about it. All I ask is that you mention nothing about this to anyone else. Fenny nodded. Of course not. I'm sorry. I hope it goes well for you. Good luck. She swung her legs out from under the table and stood up. With a brief smile at them, she turned and walked towards the doorway. Don't you think you ought to make her forget? Freddy hissed. Lydia looked him in the eye and smiled. She already has. They spoke little as they went to their first lesson after lunch. They had care of magical creatures. This was lucky. They would be outside and six of the nine current members of the Companions would be there. The lesson was on the care of Neasles. The Neasles resembled large furry cats and had a reputation for being intelligent. Oddie was sceptical that they would be as intelligent or as friendly as Xander. They surprised him. Their care consisted of carefully brushing them to remove any tangles from their luxuriant fur and feeding them a variety of treats. We've got nine companions now, Lydia told them, under the cover of brushing their nasals. I think that's going to have to be enough. I don't think you should give up just because it's the easy thing to do, Oddie warned. Ambrose said I only need eight, Lydia explained. I've heard more from Ambrose than you have, Oddie said. At least I've heard more directly about this task than you. He asked me to use my judgment in what I tell you. My advice would be to have at least one more companion. It hurt Ambrose to tell you that eight was the minimum. They didn't want him to say that. Can you ask him? Lydia began. No, Oddie cut in. And I can't say any more until we're ready. Don't ask me anything else until then. Lydia looked up at him. He looked her in the eye. That shocked her. This was an Oddie she was not used to seeing. After a pause, she said, I'll rely on you to let me know when that time comes. I'm guessing that we don't want to draw attention. I'll find someone else. What happens next, Lids? Sophie asked. I'll find another member for the companions, she replied, feeding a treat to her nasal. Hopefully tonight we'll go to see Ambrose. I'd like us to go while everyone else is asleep, so wear something to bed that you won't mind being seen in. No frillies, Dean, said Shona. Oh, spoil sport, Dean joked, then asked. How will we get there? A magic, Dean, Freddy pointed out. Lydia will move us all. You'll just suddenly be there. It's epic. Keep your voice down, Lydia hissed. Professor Hagrid was walking towards them. How are you getting on with your kneesles? he asked, as he arrived next to the group. The easy to get on with, Professor, Oddie said. Ho, oh, oh, I thought you'd like em. He grinned from behind his enormous grey beard. Just be a bit careful. They're powerful clever. Before you know it, they'll have you eaten out of their hands. Or paws, I suppose. Anyone who feels like taking one with you when you go, you've been had. Oddie's nasal turned its back and walked away. Ooh, we've rumbled you, you little scamp, Freddy called after the nasal. After the lesson, they made their way back up to the castle. Lydia, Shona, Dean and Oddie went up to the Ravenclaw Tower. They wanted to drop off their bags and get what they needed for the study period. 
Lydia sat in the Ravenclaw common room and waited for the others to return before they went down to the joint common room. Jimmy Oluwali was there, looking through the bookcases for a particular tomb. Hi, Jimmy, Lydia said. What have you lost? Hi, Lids, he grinned. I was just looking for Behrman's book on advanced person theories. Lydia grimaced. Oh, you might have a problem there. Oddie has one, and I've got the other. You can have mine if you're desperate for it. You going down to the JCR? he asked. We could share it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it anyway. Lydia looked at him and smiled at his cheery grin. Just then, Oddie and Dean appeared. Seriously, Dean, Oddie was saying. If you get crumbs in my books, I'll transfigure you into something which cannot eat biscuits. Actually, Jimmy, she murmured in an aside, could I have a talk with you? She turned to Dean and Oddie. You two go on ahead. I've got something I need to do first. I'll see you all in the JCR. 